Hello YouTubers! I had an incredible weekend. I, if you watched my video where I was uh, showing my gun cleaning table and gunsmithing table, there was a knife laying there. I decided after watching Ricky Wallace and uh, BC Truck making knives, and this knife has been laying around for so long, it was time for me to get on it. And I just, I was, just kind of got anxious to do it. So I took it out in the shop and I worked and worked and worked and worked on it. And then I realized I need to go over to Menards and get some epoxy. So I ran over there. And uh, if you remember that post vice stand I made, that was for a friend of mine who's a custom knife maker and he's wanting to get into some blacksmithing stuff. So I call him up and ask him what you know his advice on what to get for the epoxy. And he says, come over to my place and, and we'll do it. Well, I'd never been to his shop. So I jumped at the chance and went over there. And I had already fit the scales, flattened them out, and I've done a video on all this, but I lost a whole bunch of it. I don't know what happened. So I'm trying to do a video, and it ended up like 45, 50 minutes long, an hour long, and I'm going to chop it down into different sections of the knife building because that's just too long of a video to put anyone through. We've got my knife done, the one I was building. Well, he surprised me when I went over there, and he had made a custom knife for me. And then I did a video of it, and he's telling you about it. But I'll give you a quick look here. There's the knife that he made me. Okay. Now, we're going to go to the video I made of him telling about the knife. But you're going to get a, a glimpse of the knife that I made that he helped me with. It's a little bit bigger knife. I got uh, in trouble for using so many pins. They were already holes in the blade. He said, that's just for options. You don't have to use them all. <laughs> but I used them all. And that's I think it's coca bola or one, a type of rosewood. And I bead blasted the blade for that satin finish. So now i got to make a sheath for this one. Let's go to the video where he tells all about this knife. It's, in, it's incredible. I don't know if I showed it in the other video, but the scales and the... Um, I forget what you call this up here. They're 45 Well, I got a surprise the other day when I came over here. Barry was going to help me with that knife I was making. And... Uh, he surprised me with a, a knife as a gift. And it's laying right there. Man, it's a beauty. I'm going to have him tell you uh, exactly what it is. Okay, wanted to get a quick shot like that so you can see that it's a petite but useful size. It's not a great big, big hunting knife. <clears throat> so let's uh, get, the, get the details. Okay, this is Barry, and he's going to tell us about this knife and bring it on up here where we can see it, and then you point out the... This is a... Uh, I, I think a person needs two knives at least when you're out hunting, and I have a utilitarian type knife, and that's what I build is this type. Uh, this is like your primary knife that you would use around camp. Anything you would want to use uh, to cut open your food, cut to open up little animals, squirrel hunt, fur, you know, pheasant hunt or anything like that. And then uh, it'd be like a primary knife for you. Your big knife, I, I rec you know, I use for like if you want a baton wood or for bigger jobs and chores. This knife is made with ATS-34, Rockwell's around RC-61. The bolsters are mammoth ivory and they're pinned on, they're uh, screwed on actually and then uh, the handle material is stabilized elm burl and it uses nickel silver pins we do with a brass thong hole uh, it's, a, it's approximately a hundred, it's not an eighth, it's like a hundred thousandths thick and uh, it's a, I, I enjoy, I think the knife is uh, real, a real handy knife, you'll like it it has a small handle. It measures not quite seven inches. 
So, it, and a lot of times I recommend that we put them on a belt and we have a horizontal sheath so that uh, it's not in your way. You don't even know you have it on. You can wear a weapon. It doesn't hang down. And uh, you can hang it down. It just depends on how we build the sheath for you and for the knife. Uh, but I was talking to Steve and telling him, uh, and he's seen mine, and it's I I enjoy wearing it that way, and it's it doesn't get in your way, and you'd be surprised how nice it is to wear. And uh, as like on a bigger knife, the knife sheath hangs down. You actually it's cumbersome, and. Uh, we just kind of build some sheaths with the knives that are at an angle, uh, like a side kind of holster and or horizontal, and I can make traditional ones, whatever the people like. But I hope Steve enjoys this. I told him you can use it as a neck knife or anything, but, uh, uh, it, you know, we both talked. We both said this is probably not a neck knife. It's more like a small bird knife, utilitarian knife. Thanks. I really appreciate the knife, and man, it is beautiful. Let me get it over here in the light a little better. I don't know if it's going to work. Get it up here real close. The, the mammoth ivory, the nickel, uh, nickel silver yep, pins, nickel silver pins, yep. and the brass and the blade shape. I'm going to make a, a sheath for it that'll go on my left side horizontal so I can reach over with my right hand and pull it out. That's the plan. Hey, Barry put me to work on my own knife here. He's making me work on it now. But he brought out a couple knives to to show me. This is one he took to uh, Colorado elk hunting. Yep. Bow with bow. Bow hunting. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of like a neck knife, but he put it in a sheath that goes sideways on your belt, and it's a it's another beauty. You're not going to be able to tell the quality with my crappy camera, but it's just a nice little knife, nice size. And then here's one that he's working on. He kind of dinged it up so it looked like it was was a uh, flint. Flint steel knife. Flint steel knife, and he'll put some stag handles on it. And here's one that's done. And is this one you took hunting, or is this? No, this is just done for sale. Is it's that mocha may? Mocha may. And then that's got that's ivory and that's stag. Oh, it, it, so that's called mocha may. Yeah, mocha may. Yeah. It's soft metals, copper, brass, nickels, tins. Okay. Mixed it's like a Damascus with soft yeah. metals. Yes. And then Correct. it's got a thin. Uh, Mastodon ivory? Yes, sir. And then stag. And it's got those fancy rivets, or they're screws, actually. Yeah. You can take the handle off and do whatever, put different handles on or they but get damaged. But the wood to metal fit. I mean, you can't tell there's a, they're two different things or three different things. They fit so well. Are there, is there a, yes. a so liner? Are there a little? A little Unusual spacer. It's cur yeah. curly cue type thing. You know, yeah. like a corrugated spacer. Wow. I you turned it sideways and I saw that. Yeah, pretty slick, ain't it? Yeah. In here? No, it's not it's in just there. there. Just in that side part. Between on the uh, between on both sides of the ivory, you can see a little curly cue spacer in there. That's cool. That's the little things that add up to, yeah, you know, that's what I had text on the bucks. <laughs> <laughs>